Hello, this is Professor Grant Thrall welcoming you to Market Analysis of Urban Built Environments. This is Module 2, Part A, Market Feasibility. This part, Module 2, will deal with trade areas, gap analysis, aggregate market gap analysis, then I will provide an example retail gap analysis and on to experience and practice. So for the first section, trade area, the most important thing that we do in market analysis is calculate the trade area. Problem is, how do you calculate a trade area? What is a trade area? After we calculate the trade area, we estimate what the demand will be arising from that trade area and also evaluate the competitive supply not just for the current time period but projected into a reasonable future. These are all interconnected. A different trade area will generate a different demand and create a different competitive supply. We must keep that in mind what type of trade area we're using, what its definition is, and how stable our results are to different trade area algorithms or different trade area estimations. We then analyze the resulting information, assemble it for gap analysis and then for absorption analysis. Calculating a trade area is complex. First of all, we have to start out with what is the product? Is the product an office building, a class A or a class C office building? Is the uh, product a uh, retail store? Is it a restaurant? Is it a regional shopping center? Once we identify the product, then that is interdependent. Those gears are intermeshed with what the value platform is. The value platform is the total experience that is offered by the location, uh, by the good consumed. Uh, for example, you know, a specialized coffee. Consider Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, uh, and a, uh, a locally owned, not part of a chain, specialty coffee store that roasts their own beans on site. So we have four different value platforms, each offering good coffee, each offering a different consumption experience. The consumption experience comes from the actual product consumed, the experience of the store being within the store, and the geographic context of the facility. So are you in a power center? Uh, that may be where McDonald's and, and the Starbucks could be found, but they're, even within the same power center, they're going to be appealing to different population segments. And we'll go through how we segment population into consuming groups uh, in the other modules. The cons customer origin where is the customer coming from? Is the customer going to the destination? Is this an or drawn to that destination? Or is it a drive-by customer at work in an office building and the customer is going out to lunch? Take the elevator downstairs. It's very different than, let's say, the uh, origin of where the customer lives and their destination is that class A office building and they happen to be driving by a retail center on the way to or from work. Or it could be that the customer's origin is home and they're going to a regional mall or a power center to spend the day shopping. So the destination is that destination retailer, sometimes referred to as the big box retailer, uh, at the shopping center. And while they're there, they're get a bite to eat. Facility uh, access location to represent the concept of perhaps the facility that you're going to could be brick and mortar 
but the facility could also be your PDA or your computer. That is the access location. That is the storefront on your desk or a brick and mortar store. And what is the ultimate customer destination? Is location or that place of employment changes. Uh, the factory moves from one location to another. And overriding all of this shown in the background as the lightning bolt is friction of space. The further you are from a place, the less likely you will interact with it. The closer you are to a place, the more likely. On the one hand, if one can speedily transport themselves across the landscape, the distances can be quite vast. If we have a lot of congestion, then the distances will be quite short. There's been a lot of, a lot of studies on, on travel behavior. People will, let's say, uh, be willing to travel up to 40 minutes between home and work. Each category of people have a different preference for tra travel time, different willingness, different resistance to travel time. And if, let's say that somebody's travel time is 20 minutes, that they're willing to do. If they can travel 10 miles in that 20 minutes, then they will. If they can only travel four miles in that 20 minutes, then that as far as that they will locate between their home place and their place of work. Businesses, retailers, don't necessarily prefer that the distances that someone can travel is large. They want to access a large trade area for sure, but they also want that trade area to be dense. And as the travel time between places increase even though the places have remained fixed but the time of travel between the places resulting from congestion a greater amount of people accessing the transportation pathways as that increases as the area economically develops then the retailer will benefit because there's more people nearby their travel time may be reduced so retailers like to see a mixture they like to see high density near to, but also on, let's say, an interstate or on a rapid transit system. We're going to go through various ways of calculating trade areas in more detail. We have the radial ring, which is a, often referred to as a ring study. We need to know in every instance how the algorithm was employed. Often, the market studies will be done at the level of a five-digit zip code in the United States, or the, which is a, a polygon created at the convenience, effectively, by the uh, Postal Service. The, uh, but also we have census geography. Uh, we might use a collection of uh, census blocks or block groups. There might be other common polygons, which were not created for the purpose of market studies, they're used as containers of data within market studies. And because it's a convenient container for data does not mean that it's a correct representation of a trade area. And also I'll go through others, which includes the, in many circumstances, and a variation on the wedge algorithm is one in which I've worked with a colleague uh, in the university uh, and a former graduate student, uh, and which is wedge casting, the Patel Thick Thrall PFT, we'll refer to it as algorithm. The discussion in this module is based upon Grant Thrall Business Geography and New Real Estate Market Analysis, published by Oxford University in 2002. And in particular, Module 2 is based upon Chapters 1 and 2 of that publication. We'll be back for Module 2, Part B.